of the sermon. Okay, tell me if I'm going, going on too long. He'll throw something at me when you're done. The first one. You shall have no other gods before me. This ties in beautifully with Jesus, Jesus' teaching on the Sermon on the Mount, about not being able to serve two masters, and also his defence against the devil in the wilderness, uh, Luke 4, um, in the wilderness temptations where he says, it is written, every time it is written, um, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. As Christians we need to be putting God first. Mm. Number two. <coughs> No idols. Does anyone know where that is? Okay, I won't mention Bohemian Grove then. You shall not make for yourself an image. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. This may not be much of an issue in British society today, or perhaps it is. But in Jesus' day, in fact up to today, in the Middle East, this is a hot topic. Jesus addressed this best to the fat woman at the well. You know the one? The woman of some area? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I got it right. That's a good road. Yeah, yeah. That's a good road. <laughs> when asked about worshipping God at Jerusalem or Samaria, he says, uh, A time is coming and has now come when the true worshippers will worship the Father in the spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshippers the Father seeks. God is spirit, and his worshippers must worship in the spirit and in truth. Now, our Catholic brothers and sisters count this and the First Commandment together. Uh, and this often gets overlooked in Catholicism, the, the idolatry thing. But I think they have the importance, at least, quite right. We mustn't allow anything to draw our worship away from God, be it money, or a particular football team, or even a devotion to a wife or a husband. God must come first. Amen. Three, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Do not use it in vain. Jesus Fine. taught his disciples to pray to the Father by saying, Hallowed be thy name. This is part of the Lord's Prayer. It's ma massively important. He also taught that every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven. Pray! Mm. But blasphemy against the Spirit will not be forgiven. In fact, it was for the crime of breaking this commandment that Jesus was condemned and crucified. Mm. The Jews were really extreme about this and never used the name of God at all. No. It's after this tradition that we find the name of God, Yahweh, Yuhei, Bafhei, translated Lord in capital letters in most translations of the Bible. Yeah. By the way, that's a really fun conversation to have with JWs who appear to have stopped calling my door. So any JWs watching this on YouTube, come on round. <laughs> um, <coughs> number four. Remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Jesus has a lot of discussion with the Jewish leaders about the Sabbath laws, <laughs> concluding that the Sabbath was made for man, not vice versa. The principle makes good logical sense and should be taken seriously. During the French Revolution, they tried to use a ten, week, ten day week, but they found that without the Sabbath principle, people got overtired. Man works on a seven day cycle, and that should be honoured as God's design. Commandment number five. What's number five? Oh, you don't know off the top of your head? Honour thy mother and thy father. Honour your mother and father. Uh, the first of the love your neighbour commandments. So we've done the first half, the uh, love, love the Lord your God. The first of the love your neighbour commandments is also the first with a specific carrot or positive incentive or blessing. Jesus, fulf Jesus fulfilled this commandment by respecting his parents as he grew up and providing for Mary's care when he was gone. His teaching in Luke 14, if anyone comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, even their own life, such a person cannot be my disciple. That does not contradict this. 
this is one of the claims that people like to throw out, is it does not contradict this. Hate, the word hate is being used here as so very often in the Bible as hyperbole, exaggeration. The parallel teaching in Matthew 10 eliminates this problem by saying what Jesus really means, which is that a follower of Jesus should love Jesus above even their own family and life. Mm. It's, putting, it's putting God first. That's what it is. If, by the way, he was only a prophet, then that would be massive blasphemy. Mm. He wasn't. No way. I, I don't need to tell you that when you're a Christian church, what we're talking about. Let's move on! To the sixth commandment. You shall not murder. People in their beds. <laughs> <laughs> or anywhere else. Okay, Valerie, I'm just looking at you here. Um, this is the act. Um, this is one of the areas where Jesus encourages us to cut the act off at the thought stage. Mm -hmm. And that, that being angry with one's brother is the same as murder. This is a hard teaching. But I, I think what he's pointing out is that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, Romans 10. And the sooner we acknowledge that, the better. It's also important to note that the Hebrew word here, or Hebrew, Hebrew I'm here again, is ratzach, which, by the way, is a great word to say if you've got a cold. Ratzach, which is also always, always translated murder and never kill. Accidental death, killing in self-defense, and killing in wartime, for example, are not included. And many Old Testament laws carry the death penalty. This is not, not standing here advocating capital punishment, but many Old Testament laws do carry the death penalty. The overarching principle here, though, is that God values life, and we should value it and hold it sacred likewise. Yeah. Number seven! Sorry, am I shouting? No, it's to wake people up, of course, yeah, now. It's to make sure we were well, still awake. Well, Paul was beginning to nod. <laughs> and I've already gone over time, and we've still got uh, 20 pages left. So, <laughs> You shall not commit adultery. Here, Jesus does the same as with murder, um, extending the sin to looking at someone with lust. The, the principle of cutting the sin off of the thought process is, is, again, the point here. In New Testament Christianity, the only defence... For divorce is unfaithfulness. Anyone who's been through a divorce knows what agony it causes and why this cannot possibly be in God's plan. <coughs> this also extends to any sex outside wedlock. Since, Joe, put your fingers in your ears a second. Good lad. Since if the relation doesn't, relationship doesn't result in marriage, which you can never be sure of until the ring is on the finger, then you've lain with another man's wife. And you have been unfaithful to your wife, even if you haven't yet met her. Keep your fingers in your ears. <laughs> this is a standard I have failed to reach in many of my past relationships, so I am far from standing in judgment if anyone else is in that situation. Um, I will make that, let make that point clear. When, whenever, there's, a, there's an old adage in preaching, whenever you're, you're pointing out, there's always... Three fingers pointing back at you. Um, so, there we go. Preaching as much to myself as anyone else. 